you just start uh, with uh, North Texas, our homecoming game this weekend, and then we'll follow up with questions. Well, we've, uh, we've moved on from uh, last week's game against uh, East Carolina, and uh, our focus is now on our really good uh, North Texas team homecoming this week, which will be exciting for our players and alumni. Uh, Dan McCarney has done a, an outstanding job, as he did at, uh, at Iowa State, and uh, his team reflects his personality. They are a tough physical defense, that plays hard, that chases the ball. Their offense is physical. Coach Canales does a great job um, offensively, along with Coach Cladani on, on defense. And it's going to be a real challenge. You, you can see what they've been building towards uh, as a program. They've got kids, that, it appears, that like to play with each other with energy and enthusiasm. And you can see it. You can feel it. And um, that's a sign of a well-coached team. So we're excited again. To get a chance to come home, we've had uh, only two games here, uh, and in both 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 times we've had an opportunity to win the game. So we're looking forward to getting back here. Uh, have you set, decided on starting quarterback? Nick Saturday? Mullins is going to start this week at quarterback. What did Mullins show you uh, Saturday? Well, what Nick showed us Saturday was his ability to create uh, when things break down, and that's uh, whether or not. Um, Allen had that capability and then over time got beat up enough to where um, he's not able to do that now. But um, the bottom line is, is is we need a spark. We need something. Um, is, it, is it hard to compare? Of course it is. Um, you're talking about um, apples and oranges, plays that are called, who you're playing, um, opportunities that each quarterback has been given. But uh, at this moment, um, we've got to see what Nick can do. We're, we're obviously struggling offensively. Uh, that's part of it. We did assess it a week ago. We looked at every throw of Allen's. We looked at our offense in general. We looked at Nick. Uh, we had planned on playing him this past week, and we did. And uh, we're just like any position. We're just constantly trying to assess the situation of who gives us the best chance to win. Uh, obviously, working behind an offensive line that's been up and down, is, is that maybe part of you say created, you know, whenever things broke down, but he's behind an offensive line struggling. Is that the tough part for the freshman out there behind the line that really is, you know, young itself? Well, I think that's part of it. We, we think Nick's going to be a really good football player. And, and you don't want a young man to get thrown in there with other young players and lose his confidence. You, you don't. You don't want to put him in there to where he becomes timid and um, he showed that that wasn't the case. So that was probably the initial part. And we've also got to remember that uh, he's 18 years old and he just showed up during the summer and, and during two a day. So uh, like both of our quarterbacks, the sample size was very small. It wasn't like you had a huge sample size to go on. We've just at this moment decided this is, this is the course we're going to take for this week. It's a week to week thing. And we think this week uh, uh, we're going to give Nick an opportunity to to move our offense forward, which is what we need to do. When did you come to this decision? I mean, was this like a on the plane ride back, or was this the no, run, no one on the plane ride back? I think you have to look at the film, and I think there's a few things on the film besides statistics. Statistics can be deceiving. There were certain opportunities that Allen had that were mistakes. There were certain opportunities where we didn't have guys open, and there wasn't protection. And the same might be true with Nick. There was probably three or four things on the film that probably came um, the way he handled himself, the way he carried himself, probably more than anything. And then some of the plays that he made with his escapability, that probably, if anything, with where we're at now offensively, that you can't see in practice. He's not live. There's things you don't see. Um, and yet our sample size is still small. I think Nick will play well. I, I always think Allen will play well. But um, we made the decision once we got back. Have you delivered the news to mm -hmm. the quarterback? I wouldn't announce it today if they didn't know. How did he, how did, I mean, did Nick just take it in stride or was he? Well, they didn't talk much, so I don't know how they took it. So it was, talked to both of them and that's the way we were going and, and they have the day off and then we'll, we'll get together tomorrow. They, they've been great. We've, we've got a great group of kids and the quarterbacks, they're no different. If you ask Nick, there would be excitement, I'm sure. And if you ask Alan, there's disappointment. I mean, Alan didn't come halfway across the country to not play and be a starter. I mean, for God's sakes, right? I mean. And Nick came here to play. So that, that's part of what we deal with. That's the hard part of it. But ultimately, uh, after 
assessing it over time, we've made this decision. You have to understand also that we had played some pretty good teams on the road Allen had to go against. He played fairly well at home. So to make, where can we make that decision earlier? I don't think so. And did you really want to start Nick Mullins on the road against a really good team? No. So the timing is right. The situation has come up. His performance has warranted us doing that. Payne's playing now really as an offense. you got a lot of freshmen out there. What do you think about that group right now and how they look at East Carolina whenever they maybe get more plays there in that second half? Well, we have a chance this week to start six true freshmen on offense, and you're going to struggle. But where you see the improvement, which is hard because the scoreboard's not showing that, but you're seeing it week to week with some of those young guys playing. And, um, you know, so that, that's where you're going to see it. It's, it's going to be difficult um, because, again, they're going to only get better. And so, um, and I see that on a daily basis at practice. And the more reps they get, the more comfortable they get, the more confident they get. Uh, it seemed like the players respond well to Nick on the field. You saw receivers downfield blocking for him and doing stuff. Does he have that hit factor, and do the players respond to him whenever he's uh, behind that quarterback? Well, I think that's a little unfair um, to say that they were, were responding to him and they weren't responding to Allen. That's not true. Uh, some of the plays they were blocking downfield was a result of Nick scrambling. So when that happened and he got out there, then that created that opportunity for them. Allen hasn't, does it, hasn't done that, wasn't doing it. Is that part of his nature? Is it part of uh, the beatdown that he's taken at times? Possibly. Um, but at the end of the day, um, I think wide receivers and players, do I think they're going to like playing for Nick? Yes. Did, did I think that they like playing with Allen? Yes. You got a lot of, like you said, young players on offense. How exciting is it knowing that they're getting all this experience early? So maybe, you know, sophomore, junior year, they're going to have a lot of. Experience. Well, I hope the excitement comes sooner than later. <laughs> that, that excitement hasn't happened uh, where we're at now. Um, but I'm not deterred. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you, this is a great job. And we've got good players. And we've got to coach them better, and we've got to play better. And I'm not wavering on what I believe in and how we're going to do it and how we're going to recruit. I'm not. I've been around some good coaches. I've seen it. And so we're going to continue to move forward. And we're going to continue to play the guys that have talent that give us a chance to win now and down the road. And those are the guys that have earned it. And um, so it is exciting to see them improve. Um, obviously, we're in this business to, to win games now. I mean, it, it's, not that, it's not that exciting. Uh, what kind of challenge is that North Texas defense going through that? Oh, they're really good. I'm just telling you, we've. We've played some pretty good teams, and, and they're as good as any of them. Not particularly any one thing other than their effort. And what they do, they do well. They don't do a lot until you get to third downs, and they get after you a little bit. But other than that, you just watch them. They're a four-down team, want to play simple coverages, but they fit things right. They play off each other, and they play well, and they play for each other. And that's the sign of a really good football team, something we're trying to build here. And um, you can see a guy that's done it before, and. And Coach has done a great job there. Coach, uh, East Carolina on Saturday, 11, on, 11 of 17 on third down. Can you kind of talk about the defensive struggles that the team has had on third down this weekend and kind of in general? Hard to pinpoint. Some of the struggles, we played some pretty good teams. I think it's, it's hard to compare statistics when you've played four really good teams on the road. And so I think that's very difficult. You've played... Um, some teams that are going to expose you in a number of ways. And then when you have some guys banged up, you're going to get even more exposed because now they're going to an experienced team and, and you, you get pieces taken from you. Um, I think as of Saturday in the second half, I think we had six initial starters that aren't playing on defense anymore, a lot of them on the perimeter. So you're going to see that. And um, so we've got to do a better job. I know Coach Duggan uh, certainly wants to do a better job, but there's a number of things we can improve on, obviously getting – better pass rush coverage, longer yardage situations that will all lend itself to that. And also from our end of it, moving the football that forces the other team to execute. Right now, when we're behind a bunch, there's no pressure put on their quarterback to make a play. There's no pressure put on their coordinator to make the right call. Right now, it's just pick one out because it doesn't matter at times. And that's, that's part of what a team does is put pressure on them to make the right calls. Talked a little bit earlier about the number of freshmen and, and, the, and you know, the number of fresh, true freshmen that have played this year, but it's not just that that's contributed to the inexperience. You've got guys like Bridgeford, 
uh, Fred Moore, Matt Mosley, Ricky Bradley that are new to the to the to the team that have also sort of contributed to the I guess to the inexperience here. So sure. Um, I mean, just if you could talk a little bit more about about you know not just the freshmen but also the guys that are new to the team. Well, it's uh, again I I don't want to make excuses. Okay. Uh, it is our job to figure out what our players can do and what we can do to find a way to win games. I understand that. With that being said, at one point, a week or two ago, we had eight or nine guys that were playing in the game. You'd look out there, none of them with us in spring. So when you talk about inconsistency for youth, that's where you're going to get it from, a lack of, you know, three different systems in three years. Okay, then an experience. And, uh, and we've got to do it better. I'm, I'm not exonerating ourselves. That's where it starts with me as the head coach and then our coaches. And that's where the tough part is. Is uh, That's why I said we're not going to waver. Okay, We're going to continue to coach our guys. We're going to continue to be positive. This is a great place. Like I said the other day, I love being the head coach at Southern Miss. I'm never going to change that. I'm not going to let anything deter myself from what my goal is, is to put the best product on the field. And that's what we're going to continue to do. Is it hard at times? You bet it is. Because there are things that come up that that are difficult, that you don't have a chance to get covered all the time um, because of inexperience. They haven't done it enough. And so that's that's just part of it. No one cares. Um, North Texas doesn't care. And our fans don't care. And our coaches, we can't care. We can never use inexperience and, and youth as an excuse of why we can't play good football. And plain and simple, we've had two games at home where we've turned it over 10 times. Some of that had to do with youth. Some of it had to do with coaching. Whatever it is, you're not going to give yourself a chance to win. As part of the continuing assessment, like you said, of, of you know position by position, continuing to assess things week to week, where does the place kicker thing stand? I mean, Corey's missed four, in a row, or not missed, but had four attempts in a row that that haven't gone through. So, is there any you know movement there, or or where's his where's his head at? Or? <clears throat> well, it's hard to know, you know, whether it's. Um, you know, whether it's been the misses or the, or the blocks that have been a part of it. Um, we did take off his plate this week, his punting, which may have added to that. You know, he was kicking off and he was, he was our place kicker. And then because Matt went down, now he's punting, which is a lot to ask a young man. So um, obviously we've got to get to the point where he gets the ball up because we were kicking the ball low. That's why we had a couple of them blocked. And then obviously we got to do it better than a number of our protection and then Corey's confidence, and um, you know that's that's something he has to deal with. That's I I can't go out there and kick it for him. I can't create that confidence. We can create it in practice where he feels good about it, and you know he's got to have enough belief in himself that what he's done his whole life that it, it's mental. You know, is it mental or is it isn't? It's something physical. How can we correct it? But at the end of the day, um, what we see in practice, I assume we're going to see in the game, which he's been kicking fine in practice. What do you think that pain from? What he did in the game was a lot like what he does in practice. He plays hard, doesn't say a word, and enjoys to play football. And he's a physical guy. And he's only going to get better. And that's why we decided to play him. We said it's just obvious every day that this guy loves to play, runs hard, finishes 30 yards down the field, comes back, takes the next play, doesn't that pull himself out. He's that kind of kid. He's what you want to build your program around. Those kind of guys are what you want to build your program around. When you get enough of those guys like that, and we've got other guys, he's not the only one. Now you're really now you're cooking, and that's why we decided to play him. Let's not wait. Let's get him out there. And the guy's got a smile on his face, likes to play football, and he's physical, and uh, he moves piles. Uh, probably most I mean, he played at the one A level in Alabama. I mean, I don't even know. It could have been seven man football. I don't know. I just know he was pretty good. I just know when I watched him, I said he's pretty good. He's got good feet. He's athletic. Uh, he's downhill. The only question was, was his long speed. And yet bigger guys like that carry their pads and they'll play fast with their pads on. Some smaller guys don't play as fast with their pads on. He plays fast with his pads on. Uh, I know Mullins played in a similar offense in high school. What's his understanding of your offense? How much? That's, that's enabled him to be further ahead than, than maybe Parker is at this moment. Um, Chip Lindsay was his coach over there at Spain Park, did a great job is now at Auburn and, and it was very similar systems so it was a lot easier for him to come in and grasp it and so that that's given him an opportunity to have success and Nick is a naturally confident guy he's very smart confident um, has a uh, 
a way about him. He does have a factor that, you know, getting the guys going and, and that sort of thing. And it factor, I guess, is what everybody calls it. We think he has that. And um, so we're hopeful that, that that will be a spark um, that we need offensively because we need something, that's for sure. How about, uh, you know, I was looking it over uh, against East Carolina, two of the Two of your top three guys in terms of targets didn't get any on Saturday, and that was uh, obviously Ricky and, and T-Man. Uh, Dominique didn't get any targets. Kendrick didn't carry the ball. Was there anything to that, or was it just the flow of the game? Or well, sometimes it's just by design, by game plan. You know, we thought potentially that we were putting too much on T-Man, that we were putting too much on a young guy to do a lot of things that. Um, he's not ready yet to do. And so we want to take that some of that out of his hands. Some of it was because George, just for the first week, we were putting him in our 20 personnel and letting him run downhill. Well, that takes T-Man out of the game. So that's why that happens. when, Based on the personnel we're using, that we're going to expand that as George gets more comfortable. Um, and as T-Man gets more comfortable, we had to figure out who we could put on the field that gives us the best chance to win. And part of that was, in the first half, you notice we're trying to make a conscientious decision not to turn it over. I mean, well, that's running the football, that's play action, that's, you know, and T's been a part of some of the turnovers we've had, just by his youth, strength, and those things. So we're just trying to make sure that when we put him in, hey, we give him a chance to have success, and it, and it doesn't hurt our offense. And T's going to be a really good football player, it really is. But, um, you know, when we're trying to mix and match and get guys comfortable that haven't played, it's, it's always hard. Marquise Ricard's involvement in the offense has continued to increase from week to week. I mean, is he where you think he should be or where you want him to be right now? Well, is he further ahead than he probably should be? Yeah, sure. Is he where I want him to be? No. We don't have many people that are where we want him to be right now. But he's continuing to improve. Marquise Ricard has no idea how good he can be. You talk about athletic, body control, ball skills, length. I mean, he's going to be a really good football player. And, and we've got a number of those guys. T is, and, and George Payne is, and we think Nick is, and we think you know Cameron Tom, and all these guys were playing. That just the youth shows at different spots. But he is going to be a really good football player, and we're going to continue to target those guys that we think, that we see, what we see during the week. That's all you can go by, right? Usually what you get during the week is what you get on game day. Same in recruiting. You think they're going to change? Some guys do, but what you see on that film is what you're going to get. And in practice, we try to tell our guys that. What we want to see in the game, we've got to see during practice. And that's what we go by. Not that it's not going to change in the game, because that's ultimately, right, It's it, the, the sample size has got to be on game film. But we can only go by what we see in practice. Talking about, a lot about youth and, and experience, but I mean, for some of these freshmen that haven't played a homecoming game, is there a different level of excitement leading up to this week for them? I have no idea. I mean, whether or not homecoming gets them fired up or um, it ought to, just from a standpoint of uh, the potential for former players to come in that have been a big part of this program, uh, that have made it what it is today in terms of the, the history and the success uh, that has been the foundation that's been built here. So that part of it I'm excited about, meeting guys that come back, that played here, that were a big part of the past, that I don't know yet, that I haven't had a chance to meet. And I'll relay that to our players. And um, so... I think the excitement comes from having another opportunity to get a win. And at home, in front of a, a crowd, we hope, a homecoming crowd that's excited about coming back and uh, giving ourselves a chance to, to, to take a step forward in, in our improvement as a team.